For those who don't know, uh, know me, I'm Matt. Um, I'm standing on the projector, sure. Um, I work for a company called Audiogum. I have done for the past year. Audiogum is uh, uh, an offshoot from what used to be Mixed Radio. A lot of the core team have now moved over to Audiogum. We specialize in sort of apps and smart speakers and that sort of niche. Uh, my talk today is going to be about trunk-based development. Uh, if you may or may not be familiar with this term, um, it's, it's basically an alternative to feature branching, with, which a lot of you will be familiar with and I'm going to see if I can talk about it. So this is the central question that I want to pose to you. Like, this is quite a big question. The question is, what are the best practices for developing software in a team? This is such a huge question, like, we can't answer this with one practice. Um, I believe as developers, it's our responsibility to constantly be asking ourselves this question, taking the practices which work well for us and discarding those which don't and hidden productivity. This question is why we've gone through different Agile methodologies, why we've gone from Waterfall to XP and Agile. So I'm going to be looking at a singular practice that I think a lot of us do and ask the question, can we improve it? Can we do better than what we're currently doing? So a lot of you will be familiar with this. Oh, it's a little bit washed out, but it's fine. So a lot of you will be familiar with feature branching. So I imagine if you're, not, you're familiar with it or you use it, it's one of those two, right? You probably use it. So in this diagram, you see we have two, uh, two developers. We have Professor Plum and Reverend Green. So this, this shouldn't be a surprise to you. You have a main line, you have your master, and you have two, two developers, and they're each committing on their own main line. Uh, sorry, they're, they're committing on their own branches, and they're just pulling from the shared main line. This isn't so surprising. In feature branching specifically, these branches might be a feature, right? Like Professor Plum could be working on a page. Reverend Green could be working on a new database. These are features, and we merge them back in when they're ready. You might have also heard of Gitflow, which is very popular. It's just this, it's just different names for different branches, pretty much. So, what happens next? Well, after our developers are happy enough working on their own branches, we have to merge. So let's say Professor Plum has been committing to his own brand for a few days, pulling from master, that's fine. Now he has to merge at some point, right, when his feature is done. Now given, when his, when his feature is done, and he passes some code with you, he can merge, right? Because look, master hasn't changed, he's working against the same master, he can integrate back to master with no problems, right? That's absolutely fine. The problem emerges a little bit later on. Reverend Green, when he wants to merge to master, he's committing now, and now master looks different to when he started. Someone else has put their code into master, right? So then you get this problem that there's very high likelihood of there being a merge conflict here. Right? If at any point, if the same file was touched and renaming was done, you're going to have a merge conflict when this happens. Right? The more you commit to your own branch, the more these branches diverge. Right? The software just starts to look different as you work on your own branches even further. Now this is a diagram with two developers, but it could, in most teams you'll have 20 working on their own versions of their software and their own branches. So I believe that feature branching has quite significant drawbacks that I'll try and go through. So firstly, I think the feature branching actually discourages communication between developers. So feature branching basically prioritizes the idea that as developers, we should be working always in sandboxed environments. I work in my branch that touches none of your code. You work in your branch that touches none of my code. Multiply that by five, we're all working in completely different sandboxes. If I make changes within my feature branch, I'm not necessarily having to communicate that at all. No one's seeing the changes I'm making. I'm not seeing what other people are doing. So there's no real need for that communication. You can work for a long time before you realize, oh, I've been working on top of someone else. Secondly, I think this is a big problem, refactoring is discouraged. If I want to make a change, if I want to make the code base better somehow, I have to look at everyone else that's working on their feature branches. In a, they could be working on days on their feature branch and say, will this change affect you? Will it affect you? This is quite a big problem, right? And refactoring should be quite central to how we develop maintainable software. This is quite a big point in my opinion. Thirdly, the feedback loop is much longer than it needs to be. If I'm working on a feature for two weeks, that's a two week feature loop, a two week feature branch, that's an incredibly long feedback loop. I only find out at the end, when there's a merge conflict, that I've been working on top of someone, or there's a code review. That's an, an unnecessary long, a long feedback loop that we actually can avoid pretty easily. Now finally, and this is actually might be a contentious point for some of you, feature branching is incompatible with continuous integration. The both, both can't actually coexist. So I'm going to go into this in a bit more detail. 
There's a problem, I think, that as software developers, we think now that continuous integration is running a Jenkins instance against your feature branch, the test pass, I'm doing continuous integration. Unfortunately, that's, that's not actually the case. So is it a problem? Is it bad that I'm running tests against my feature branch? Why is this a bad thing? Well, it's not really, but what am I testing? When I run tests against my branch, I'm testing my branch and master. That's it. I'm not testing any of the integrations that anyone else is working on in that test. I'm testing a small part of the code that never will exist in reality. So this is a pretty big problem. So I think it's, it's unfortunately, it's incompatible with continuous integration. Testing is less effective under feature branching. Now, excuse me while I read up this bit of text, but this is really, really important, right? Continuous integration is a development practice that requires developers to integrate code into a shared repository several times a day. Each check-in is then verified by an automated build, allowing teams to detect problems early. By integrating regularly, you detect errors quickly and locate them more easily. So as you can see, feature branching doesn't satisfy the first line of this definition. After our feature branch existed for more than a day, more than two days, more than three days, we're not doing continuous integration. This, the definition of continuous integration isn't really in dispute. Wherever you look it up, this is continuous integration. I believe you should be doing it, and I'm going to try and convince you why. Why do we want continuous integration? So I'll elaborate this in a little bit, um, but encourages communication. The smaller and more frequent integrations and changes you do means bugs are a lot easier to manage and fix. Thirdly, it's very unlikely that you're going to get a serious merge, commit, uh, merge conflict that you have to worry about. Sorry, at the risk, at risk of being a dead horse, if there's one thing that I want you to take away from this presentation, fe uh, continuous integration and feature branching are not compatible. Okay? If you're doing feature branches that last more than a day, you're not meeting the definition of continuous integration. So given that they're not compatible, how should we do branching? Well, it should look like this. We have our two developers again, Professor Plum and Reverend Green. They're working against a shared mainline. Fine. But look what they're doing. Every time each one of them makes a commit, they're going to be pulling from that mainline and pushing to that mainline. Right? They're not committing on their own maths, their own branch, for multiple times in a week. Right? They're just committing to a shared mainline and pulling. This satisfies the first definition of continuous integration. So this actually increases a lot of visibility, which increases communication. I always know what my team are working on because it's in the main line, right? No one's on their own branch. Everyone's pushing to master. I can see what they're working on. They can see what I'm working on. If a conflict my array arise between what my colleague and I are working on, I can just talk to them. I can resolve it sooner rather than later. I don't have to wait till they merge to say that they've been working on top of what I'm working on. So remember, right, these, these commits that we're pushing to the mainline are very, very small. They're less than a day's work. They're a few hours' work. We're going to have a test suite running against our mainline of continuous integration, integration unit tests, right? So I make a small change. I push it, push it to mainline. That test fails. I then have to look at two or three files to see where that test failed. I'm not worried about any integration that might have caused the problem. I've got such a short amount of um, code to look through. It's really easy to catch the the issue. In feature branching, you have the opposite problem. You have a lot of code, a lot of integration to work through to fix the bugs. So, two common questions you get. Firstly, how do you do a big change? If I'm building a huge new feature, changing a database, how do I do it with this Git branching model? Well, let me just look at the opposite approach. So, in feature branching, we say, oh, I have this big change to do. Now, the best way for me to do that is to take a branch run my own feature, build it way off in this branch, nowhere near anyone else's code. No one can see what I'm doing. No one can see if my code is going to be a problem for them. And then at some point, later down the line, push it back in, which is going to cause a huge integration problem, right? So how do I do a big change? Build it in the code, right? You don't have to expose it to the user for you to start building it. You just push it to the main line, and then you can easily and early address problems that may arise. You can say, oh, I need to do some refactoring. I need to change some classes. You build your feature, and then you can easily see quickly if something needs to be changed. You communicate more, it's more visible. How are code reviews managed? Well, fine, you have code reviews, pull requests, these are good things, right? In uh, continuous integration, in trunk-based development, you can still have them, you just do them more times a day, 
or you just do some pair programming in XP style. So, trunk based development. Is this a new idea? Have I just come up and thought of this and said, look, this is really great, guys. It's 2018. This is a new idea. You should definitely adopt it. Of course it's not a new idea, right? This, this idea of continuous integration, its definition, it's, it's from the early 90s, right? Extreme programming was 1991 and they were advocating for continuous integration. This is a very, very old idea. And the fact is that feature branching, it may be because of the prevalence of Git and the prevalence of branching or the prevalence of open source has now become the preferred way to do things. Unfortunately, I don't think that this is the best way. I think we've gone from a good way of doing things to a bad way of doing things. And it's a slight misunderstanding about how to do this. This is how my team works. I'm not just saying this is hypothetically a good idea. This is how we work at AudioGum. It's how we have done for, for many, many years before that. Um, it encourages communication. Uh, we don't run into a lot of the problems we see the future branches. So to wrap it up, thanks for listening. I have some time for the questions. Cool.